Time for some air, air, as we welcome in Andy Martino from Lone Depot Park in Miami. Andy, Max Scherzer today did his job. Air, air. Eh. Look, he was obviously toying with the Marlins hitters, dominating them with that slider for five innings. But he did leave with the game tied 3-3. Buck Showalter was very complimentary of Scherzer. Scherzer felt it was basically a solid outing, and of course he was right. But what he got into there in the six was a very poorly timed issue of pitch selection and also just not quite having that dominant fastball that a top upper echelon pitcher would like to have, necessarily at this point in Max's career. I agree. It's eh. Max Scherzer has to be better than that. Now, it's one game. You're not going to go nuts, but he's got to be better, and you cannot get beat by the one guy in that lineup that could beat you in Cooper. All right, Danny, it was important for a shutdown performance from the Mets' bullpen. Eh or eh? Eh, yeah, 100%. You come into the season without Edwin Diaz, who is the best closer in the game, has one of the top most impactful pitches in all of baseball last season and you get three shutouts six strikeouts from these guys and they get themselves out of a little bit of a jam and, and David Robertson post game says when the phone rings I'm going to answer who else do you want in your bullpen besides a guy like that who's going to show up and do his job no matter what that's the kind of mentality you want to see and especially we talk a lot about the innings right Edwin Diaz and how many innings he pitched last season he's not replaceable but those innings are and those guys did their job very important that the bullpen gets off to a good start all right and Jeff McNeil is the hitter in New York. You want up at the plate with a runner in scoring position and two outs. Eh, eh, eh. Sal, this is a big eh for me, and I'll tell you why. He's got a career batting average of 340 in such situations and a career OPS of 908, and he's got the insane hand-eye coordination that we all know and love, the bat control that enabled him to bury shifts, and I think it's going to enable him to get a lot of hits this season, even though the shifts have been banned. This guy makes contact, makes things happen, get balls will get through the infield, so bring me a little Jeff McNeil in those situations, and we'll get the run in. Check this out. Some creativity down there by a Mets fan in Miami. He he made great use of an old Noah Syndergaard jersey, making it into a Kodai Senga jersey. Danny, you're impressed with this homemade Kodai Senga jersey. A hundred percent. First of all, he's talking to Steve Cohen right next to him. Second of all, he takes the jersey and figures out a way to wheel a fortune. It. The seven line is unmatched at this point. I'm looking at that and I'm like, dang, like you had to do a lot of thinking, dude, to figure that out. You bring it there. You heard Brandon Nimmo post game. He said this basically feels like a home game for us. Those fans are unmatched every time. I loved it. Make good use of whatever you spent on that Syndergaard jersey that would otherwise be worthless at this point. Turn it into a Senga. I love it. <laughs>